So in this video we will be discussing the C++ implementation of the Prim's algorithm. So the Prim's algorithm has been discussed in the previous video. Now at first we will be discussing the brute force implementation of Prim's algorithm and then I will tell you how to optimize that brute force. So specifically I take the graph input in an adjacency list over here which has n nodes and m edges right after that we will be implementing the prims algorithm so as of now the graph is stored in this adjacency list so we will be requiring three different arrays as you did see in the prims algorithm implementation the parent array the key array and the mst array now the key array will be marked with infinity the mst will be marked with false and the parent will be marked with minus one so we make sure that the zeroth index of the key is marked with zero that is what we did uh, while implementing the prims algorithm now what was the step that we were doing every time the step that we were doing was to find the minimal in the key array right and we kept on doing that the step was like this find the minimal in the key array and for that iterate through the adjacent and just keep on updating the key as well as the parent that is what we did so let's do it now the first thing that we know is we are going to have n minus 1 edges in our minimum spanning tree. So that's why we are going to iterate for n minus 1 edges. So that's the first stuff that we are going to do. We are going to iterate for n minus 1 edges. That's for sure. Now the first step, what I do is I figure out which is the minimal key value. So in order to do that, I iterate from 0 to n, right? And I check if that's not a part of MST, that, that was very important if that is not a part of mst and the value is lesser than the mini in that case i can say this is the mini and i store the index so I basically in this loop i figure out which is the minimal key value and i store its index and i also make sure that's not a part of the mst if you carefully remember the prims algorithm implementation we found out the mini index but we also made sure it's not the part of the mst once you find out you mark it as true in your MST if you remember, right? And what is the next step? You iterate for all its adjacent nodes. So let's iterate for its adjacent node. Now the adjacent nodes will have the node V and the edge weight will be this. So I just store it. Now what did we do? If it was not a part of MST, yes, if it was not a part of MST. So we compared that weight with our key value, right? If a previous key has been there, we just compare it. And if it is not, what we did was we replaced key. If you remember, we replaced. So we replace key. And what is the other thing that we do? We marked that node's parent because it's coming from the node U because that's the node which is the minimal. It's coming from that. So we mark it. So this is what we will do for all its adjacent. We keep on doing these steps for n minus 1 times. Very simple. We find the minimal. Then for all the adjacent, we keep on updating the key as well as the parent. Once you have done this, we can simply iterate from 1 to n and we can print on the edges like this parent of i will be i. So that's the edge, right? So we can simply print it. Now, let's analyze the time complexity. So I can say the outer loop is running for n times, right? And the inner loop is running for n times over here. So it's a it's a n square kind of complexity. So I can say it's it's all it's uh, greater than n square that's for sure because there's another adjacent node loop running in so i can say that it is greater than n square and that's not an efficient approach so this is how you are going to do it in a brute force way so that's the brute force approach uh, n square and there's another approach for input and for these initializations but the greater part is n square so i can say the time complexity that we are using over here is n square greater than n square and the space complexity will be these guys and adjacency list so how can we optimize this again it's going to be very easy now you know a data structure which helps you to find the minimal so we can use that data structure heap data structure or priority queue in c plus plus what if i can change this with priority queue i can easily have priority queue which gets me the minimal value and you know that priority queue gives you the minimal value in log n. So I can replace this using log n, right? And you know, if you're traversing for adjacent nodes of all nodes, that's not n square, that's n plus c. If you're traversing adjacent nodes of every node, 
that's n plus e not n square so let's now check out the prior TQ implementation and then we will discuss the time complexity but you got an idea right we basically are finding out the minimal so we just need to replace it using a prior TQ and we can get the minimal logarithm again right so let's now quickly check out prior TQ implementation then the now in the efficient implementation you can see everything stays the same right till here everything stays the same we have a parent array we have a key array we have a MST array but we declare a minimal priority queue and this is the syntax right and what we store is instead of iterating on key of i and finding out the minimal we are going to store the key of i because that's that is the minimal that I need to find and the index so initially the key of i for the minimal guy will be 0 and this is 0 everything else was infinity so there's only one guy with a 0 value if you remember so I just insert 0 comma 0 saying for index 0 there's a value 0 saying this okay and now what I do is instead of iterating in the entire key array and figuring out the minimal I say hey give me the node which is having the minimal value and that's q dot top dot second because this is the index which is having the minimal value this 0 is the index is which is having the minimal value so I just say pq dot top dot second I just replace a heap data structure instead of a for loop and I get whichever is minimal and then we do the same thing we just pop that out from the priority cube because we have taken it and then we mark it as MST and we iterate for adjacent nodes similar to what we did in the previous brute force code but the difference that we again do is over here we are initializing parent of view to u but we just make sure that is inserted into the priority queue so we insert key of v and the index v where we are marking that key of v equal to weight so we just make sure we insert it into the priority queue so that the next time whenever we iterate we try to iterate and find the minimal the priority queue can simply give up an answer so instead of using a for loop i used a priority queue and the rest of the implementation still stays the same so you can now observe what is the time complexity big of n over here that's okay that's not n square a big of n over here but this is log n this is logarithmic of n so that's n log n and this is not n this is not n this into this is n plus e the number of nodes plus the number of h's that is what is the total time of these two loops if you run it inside it so I can say it's n plus e plus n log n that is what I can see this complexity to be which is much much lesser than n square and if I just round it up it will be near about n log n I can call it as n log n time complexity for a prims algorithm including a space complexity for adjacency list for these three arrays and a priority queue but the time complexity from n square in the brute force has been reduced to near about n log n is what I can say so the time complexity of prims algorithm is clear that's n log n if you are using a heap data structure it's near about n square we are, if you are using for loop to iterate and find the minimal value so that will be about the time complexity so guys I hope you have understood the C++ implementation of the prims algorithm just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and with this I'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in the next video